a legendary bowl game, a historic basketball loss, and a new sports facility being built right here on campus. These are just a few of the topics we'll be talking about in today's show. I'm your host, Jarrell Silvers, and I'll be taking you into overtime. First up, we'd like to give a big congratulations to our NIU Husky football team. They gave a passionate performance against Florida State, almost tying the game in a third quarter drive after retrieving an onside kick. The daring play calling and never say die attitude of the Huskies made for a very entertaining game. But sadly, the Huskies lost 31 to 10 turning the ball over late in the third quarter, allowing the Noles to go on a 14-0 scoring route in the fourth quarter. However, the Huskies did make history, going down in the books as the first MAC team ever to compete in a BCS Bowl game. Congratulations, Huskies. We're all expecting yet another great season from you all. In other news, we had overtime correspondent Sierra Riley report on the new sports facility set to debut on NIU's campus later this year. Let's take a look. Lately, if you've been walking around NIU's campus, you may have noticed a few new buildings currently under construction. If you've taken a look to the right of the Jordan Center, you'd see the new Cheswick Practice Center being built. We caught up with track field and cross country director Connie T. Berry to see what the new center will mean for her and her team. Um, we'll be able to practice events that we cannot practice right now on a regular basis. Um, we've had to go to the high schools, we've had to be in grass, you know, we have to wait till the weather breaks and get outdoors now that we have an outdoor track. Um, so in the indoor season, um, those events, the pole vault, the high jump, um, the long jump, triple jump are, are events that we have great athletes at but they can't get quality training. Some might not have been familiar with the center's purpose, but it's a groundbreaking improvement for the Husky athletic program. This is Sierra Riley reporting for Overtime. Back to you, Jarrell. Thanks, Sierra. The Chessick Center will feature a full NCAA-sized football field equipped with artificial turf, allowing our football team to practice no matter the season. It will also consist of a four-lane track and a long jump pit and batting cages for our softball and baseball team. A special thanks goes out to Kenneth and Ellen Chesick for their wonderful donation to the campus, providing our Huskies a place to hone their skills and enhance their performance. Thank you. We've got men's and women's basketball ahead, so come back for our key game analysis after the break. I'm Marcus Lashock, NIU class of 2005, and I've got a great job. I'm a feature reporter here at WGN-TV. My NIU experience really prepared me for my job in a lot of ways. I learned to do a lot of different things. I learned to edit video, I learned to shoot video, and these are tools I use on a daily basis. A big part of my job is blogging every day on WGNTV.com. I graduated from NIU four years ago. I'm at one of the top television stations in America. What else can I say? I'm Marcus Lashock, NIU class of 2005, and I've got a great job. Welcome back to Overtime. I'm host Jarrell Silvers, chilling with my co-host Troy Webster. Troy, tell me a little bit about yourself. How's it going, Husky fans? I'm a junior here at NIU. I'm a journalism major, and I'm excited to get the season started. Awesome, awesome. Now it's my favorite time. Let's go straight into key games. First up, we've got men's basketball with the Huskies versus the Kent State Flashes. Very exciting game if you missed it went down to the wire. Troy, what were your thoughts in the early minutes of the game? Early on, the Huskies were dribbling a lot, but they were still trying to attack the basket. The Flashes, on the other hand, had a good rhythm, but they, are, they went on a couple runs early on, but the bright, spot for the, the bright spot for the Huskies was Axel Bowling, who was real aggressive towards the rim. Man, 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 he was pretty aggressive, but I gotta give a big shout out to my boy, Abdul Nader, you know, game winning shot. You know, that was pretty historic for the Huskies, man. It was pretty, pretty nice to watch in person. You know, so what did, what did you think of his performance overall? Or what did you like in the offense? Well, they move the ball pretty good and they dribble a lot, but the thing is, is they often are aggressive towards the rim. They keep, it, keep being aggressive and aggressive and aggressive. And the more you do that, it'll find open shots all around the court. Okay. Now all they have to do is knock them down. 
Exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, shifting from offense, let's talk a little bit about the defense. What did you think and what did you like? The de on the defensive side of the ball, I like Kevin Gray's performance. Before he got injured, he was just dominating the paint and there wasn't a lot of shots that was, could go in because of him. Exactly, exactly. Moving along, we have some women's basketball for you all. The Huskies versus the Miami of Ohio Red Hawks. Not the Huskies' best effort. And number 14, my personal favorite player, went down with an injury. Troy, what were your thoughts in the early minutes of this game? In this game, the Huskies, basically, they were shooting good wide open shots. They just couldn't make anything fall. And that's okay, but they'll have to practice on that. What about early on when they got all those turnovers, man? They were pretty, they were getting after it. Well, when you get turnovers, of course, you're gonna, they're going to score on a rapid pace. They just have to finish at the rim. Exactly, exactly. Now, we saw them take it to the rim a lot, but what else did we see from them offensively? Well, I mean, you saw a lot of open shots, a lot of screens, and also Taylor was, like, her shots were falling early on before she got injured. Okay. How about the defense? The defense was okay, but most of the time the Red Hawks were just scoring at will. Awesome, awesome. So how did it personally feel for you when Taylor went down? Because I know I, I almost wanted to cry. I mean, it almost reminded me of when Derrick Rose got hurt back in the playoffs last year, and I feel like it'll have the same impact. It'll hurt them just as much. Yes, yes. The Huskies will definitely be missing the key player in Taylor. But what do you think the Huskies can do overall to better the season without it? Well, I mean, somebody will have to step up on the scoring side of the ball because she is their leading scorer. So it could possibly be... Uh, it's going to be a tough situation to get through. Okay, okay. I definitely see Sneed making a little progress in the scoring department. But now let's get on to some good old MAC news. First up, we've got the MAC East and West Players of the Week and Austin Calhoun and Ryan Pearson. Troy, what do you think of these two fellas? Man, these guys are great players and they're scoring at an awesome rate. They're also getting double doubles on the last like two games. So I can see why they're the Players of the Week. Exactly. It's always heating up in the MAC. All right, coming in second, we've got Kent State speculated to repeat a MAC East Division champions in football. Troy, how are you feeling about the Flash? Man, when you can, when you're able to repeat, it shows that you have a good team on a consistent basis, year in and year out, and that just shows how good recruiting is and the players, how hard the players work in the off season. Exactly, exactly. Those guys are cutting up over there. Lastly, we've got seven MAC players set to attend the NFL Draft Combine. Troy, how are you feeling about that? And are you a little sad to see nobody in I mean, it, it is surprising because NIU does have a lot of good, ready to play in the NFL caliber players. But on the other hand, it also shows that the MAC can possibly be a good conference that sends more players to the NFL. Yes, yes. It's always a great feeling to go to the Jordan Center and see that wall with all of the back players who have previously went to the NFL. Larry English, great, great names on that wall. We'll be taking a short break, ladies and gentlemen, but we've got our word on the street and the Husky highlight next. So stay tuned. Northern Illinois University. Grit. Determination. Tenacity. We are Huskies, champions in the classroom, in competition, in life. We are Northern Illinois University, learning today, leading tomorrow. Hey NIU, welcome back, welcome back. I'm your host Jarrell Silvers and this is my co-host. Troy Webster. Nice, nice. It's finally time for our word on the street. This is where the students of NIU's campus get to voice their opinion on our current Husky athletic topics. And today's topic is, drum roll, men's basketball. After their historic loss to Eastern Michigan on January 26, we polled the campus on their opinion of the men's basketball team's performance this season. For what I've seen so far, I haven't been too impressed, but I believe we have potential to go a little farther, just with a little bit more push. Four, four points and a half, I believe it was. One for 33, if I'm not mistaken, from the three-point line. Uh, I was trying to see, was they playing the Powder Puff Girls, or was they just playing like a regular college team? But 
Yeah, there you have it. I think the school needs to put more money into having them being trained, and they need to get more time to practice more. I just feel like they should practice more, or either they need to find a new strategy on how they can win more games instead of just losing constantly. They need to find a solution on how to fix it. Wow. Troy, do you think our men's basketball team is deserving of some of these comments? Well, I think it's plain and simple. When you play like that, you, you deserve criticism. And I mean, it's gonna, it's either it's gonna be good and some's gonna be bad. Some gonna support the team, others are not. But I think the team did a good job of rebounding from that loss. That was a historic record-breaking type deal and all over sports and so it's kind of crazy. But I think they deserve it. Yeah, they kind of played us out on Sports Center a little bit. Some of the comments, I'm like, okay. Some of the comments, I was like, you know, that's a bad representation of the team. But I mean, some of the students really laid into them. But what do you think they can improve on in the season? Well, I feel like they can improve on a lot of things. But the main thing is they need to score. And somebody has to be willing to take over. And most, most of their players, they're passing, passing, waiting for something to happen. And you just can't do that in a game like basketball. So I believe Abdul Nader should be the one to take over and just dominate more in the post and on the perimeter because he's not a point guard. And that's, that's his problem. He gets caught up in thinking that he's a point guard. Yeah, yeah, I really like Abdul. He looked a little shaky on a few plays, but I really feel like if he really gets that scorer's mentality and he really gets some good plays going, rather than making his own sometimes, because he's a little shaky at that, I think he could be a really awesome player for the Huskies. On to our last segment of the day. We've got our Husky highlight. Not only has she been balling, but she's also been getting it done in the classroom. Who you talking about, real? I'm only talking about Ashley Snead. With an average of 13 points her last two games and winning Husky Scholar of the Week, she is our Husky highlight. You can check her out anytime at the next women's basketball home game. Well, folks, that's all we have for today, but make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. It will be a Black History special, outlining some of the great black athletes of American history, as well as NIU history. And we'll have more sports news. I'm Jarrell Silvers. I'm Troy Webster. And you've just been taken into overtime.